the end of April for Lakota people is usually the beginning of the new year. So we don't have January 1st. We don't have numbers for days. But when you see the moon, that people know that, okay, at this time, usually this happens, or at this month, usually this happens, because it's a cyclical thing. So we have names for the moons or the months, but we don't have names for days. We don't have that. That's a Gregorian thing. That's a Western, uh, well, that's a Catholic thing. <laughs> yeah, and of course, later Christian, and then when the industrial age begins, people use this calendar extensively concerning how many days people are going to be working, things like that. And so in that kind of society, days of the week are a big thing. But in the Lakota ancient world, that's not important. Yes, today in Lakota language, you do see words for Monday, Tuesday, and so forth. But those words were created by Catholic priests. We don't have those words. We don't even have those days of the week. We don't have things like that. So when I teach Lakota language, I don't emphasize that. I just say, well, hey, it, this is not from our culture. So just say Friday. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not traditional. So just say Tuesday. You don't have to say, <laughs> for Saturday. Gee, it's a long word. <laughs> just say Saturday. It's easier. And it, like I said, when, when it's not from our culture, I don't think we should be using a Lakota word to it. Anywho, like I said, towards the end of April is our new year. We don't have days of the week, so this could happen any day. It depends on one thing, and that is the return of the meadowlarks, the meadowlark birds. When these birds come back from the south, see, they really sing pretty songs, yeah? the meadowlarks. These are small birds. They're kind of like gray, off-white. They have dark spots on their feathers, and their chest is yellow, and it looks like they're wearing a black bib around their neck. And they really sing pretty songs. People say they speak Lakota. So when the meadowlark birds came, they sit on the teepee, and the tradition is that they're saying, P'tein They say that over and over, yeah? P'tein chalapinapi. P'tein chalapinapi. <laughs> this means buffalo calf liver is good to eat, because when you eat... Buffalo calf liver, it really tastes good. Now, this is uncooked. You don't cook this. You eat it raw, right when the buffalo is prepared. You eat the liver raw, and it really, really tastes good. So when you eat the buffalo calf liver, it really makes you feel good. You just really feel good. And when you hear these birds come back in April, it makes people feel good, too. I remember that. My mother really practiced that. Like, I remember one time she was in the kitchen, and it was April, and we were visiting, and she opened the kitchen window because the weather was really good, and she heard the meadowlarks. And she said, oh, that feels good. She said, winter's over. Because, see, when these meadowlarks return, that means no more snow. That means no more snow. <laughs> so people are happy, yeah? When when they hear the meadowlark birds singing, they really feel good. And it goes hand in hand with eating buffalo calf liver that really makes you feel good too. See, all these things have this association of the arrival of spring. That everything is new again. Everything is starting a new cycle. So that's why 
In the Lakota way, our New Year starts at the end of April. Could be any day. Also, a long time ago, when the reservation period started and Indians were becoming Christians, they would take some beliefs from Lakota star knowledge and try to mix it with Christianity. And as I explained in the Hung Happy Keep Elo Lakota Winter Solstice video, on the winter solstice, that many souls would begin their journey to the north to meet Wuchbe, who would then take them on to the next part of their soul journey. Well, during the early 1900s, many Indians were becoming Christian, so they would take this idea and they would apply it to New Year's Eve. So they would say that on New Year's Eve, there's a lot of souls walking around. And so they warned people to be careful when going out on New Year's Eve because they might see something that might scare them or shock them and maybe they'll wreck their car or lose their mind or whatever. And so they would warn people to be careful when they're going out for New Year's Eve parties and things like that. But as I said, the evening or the night when the souls are doing this is really on winter solstice and not New Year's Eve. But this was what a lot of Christian Indians did. They took parts of Lakota star knowledge beliefs and tried to apply them to Christian or Western ideas. So there's no Lakota equivalent of the December 31st New Year's Eve. Another thing that some Lakota people did was they created a heoka dance where there would be one or more heoka dancers that would come in just before the clock strikes midnight. And this heoka or this group of heokas would be representing the end of the year, yeah, that it's going out. And then comes a heoka dancer that's dressed like a baby. And this is supposed to be the new year coming in. But <laughs> as I said, this is not traditional Lakota star knowledge custom. This is a modern day adaptation. So these are some examples of how modern Western and Christian thinking Lakota people try to take Lakota star knowledge concepts and mix them with Christian or Western holidays. But as I said earlier, the Lakota New Year really begins in sometime in April when the meadowlarks come back. Then that means no more snow. That's the New Year for us. So it's not on a fixed night. It could be any night. It could be any day. It's whenever people hear meadowlarks for the first time of the year in April. To learn more about Lakota spirituality, I have written a book called Wichocha Otehike. This book also includes Lakota star knowledge information. All the videos that I make, which are about Lakota spirituality, Lakota star knowledge, and cultural information, are based on this book. This book costs 99 American dollars. And this price includes the shipping cost as well as a tracking number. And to learn more about Lakota language, I have written a Lakota language book called Chante et Danha Owoglake, Speaking from the Heart. And all my Lakota language videos are based on this book. This book cost 119 American dollars, and this price includes the shipping cost as well as a tracking number. I also teach online, and I give spiritual consultations as well. The price for these sessions 
are 35 American dollars an hour. If you are interested in any of my services and products, you can send payment via PayPal to my email address, which is hechaka7 at yahoo.com. That's H-E-H-A-K-A, the number 7, at yahoo.com. And also include your shipping address and your email address when you send your payment. Ha, oh, lila pilamayelo. Thank you very much.
este chilake aheni chiksu ye iya ta chilak o tehi wa dlake aheni ichi hamle te chila at the best of your power you dead still in front of me Okay.